am Chucky, the killer dog, and I dig it. Hey guys, welcome back to Vent Your Heart Out, and um, just been meaning to actually talk about something that I've been <laughs> been thinking about throughout this whole entire week, and it's my horror collection, <laughs> all of like horror movie franchise a a anything that involves horror i i have tons of <clears throat> sorry about that uh, i just drank a lot of water so you're gonna be hearing me clear up my throat a lot <laughs> so i've been like uh collecting these uh these figures and the brand is from neca like n-e-c-a and um they're neca figures and they're pretty cool i'm not gonna lie i like the box uh the box cover of it I, I love how from the side of it you see the movie and and like when you open it there's like a bunch of things that comes with it a bunch of accessories have a lot of articulation in it i'm not opening any of these whatsoever but like i've just been so obsessed of uh, buying these figures so far i only have six right now i have the 2018 halloween michael myers and it's just normal michael myers from the 2018 film uh also let me let me actually i'm, I'm very very curious uh i want to actually like read some of like all of these right now um i want to know what it comes with and everything and i'm going to tell you the prices of these figures now there is one uh i have five of them right in front of me but i have like i have one special one uh in in one of my uh figurine cases and uh it's just it's not that far away, but I have to get up to get it, so I don't really want to do that. So I do have the five in front of me, and they're pretty much like the beginnings of what I've purchased. Actually, second thought, I'm just going to, instead of the Halloween one, I'm going to read off to you guys, the, like, from where I started to what I have now. So, with that, let, okay, let's, let, let's get this shit started. I'm sorry that it's, it's kind of random how I'm just, like, putting all these things out. It's just that, like, I, I wasn't really prepared for this, so. Okay, the first one that I've purchased was a Friday the 13th Part 2 uh, NECA figure. Now, the movie, Friday the 13th Part 2, and it's, um, it's Jason, but with a sack for a mask. He doesn't have the, the Jason classic mask. It's not the hockey mask or anything. This figure is when he was rocking the sack, and he was rocking uh, overalls <laughs> for clothes. Uh, in the back, it shows a small little dialogue of Mrs. Voorhees is dead, and Camp Crystal Lake is shut down. But a camp next to the infamous place is stalked by an unknown insultant, which is Jason, of course. And um, uh, I think it, it comes with... Uh, oh, yeah, they, they have like these snaps right here. like So pretty much you're going to always hear that whenever I open one. And uh, what's cool about these figures is that on the left side, when you when you open it, it, it opens like a book. So like when when I open it on the left, it, it shows the figure itself holding a pickaxe. And on the right, it's the figure itself with certain accessories like a pickaxe, uh, a pitchfork, um, uh, sort of like a machete of some sort. And it, it's kind of rusted up too. it shows a campfire that you can display next to Jason, which is fucking like awesome in my opinion. And there's different types of faces that you can rock. You can rock him with the sack over his head with one hole poked through an eye so he can see, or you can take that one off and just put in a, uh, you can put in Jason's face, just his face normally with no, no mask at all. It's just his ugly deformed face. And there's also, uh, jason's mother's head but she's already dead she's deceased so it's pretty fucking cool it also comes with a knife as well i forgot about that um that one weapon that he does carry as well so it's pretty fucking awesome i leave these sealed completely it's still strapped in everything you just open it and you just look at it and that's it um actually i'm not gonna lie i am probably gonna get up to show you guys the, my favorite one the one that i have sealed uh right like right behind me i have to show you guys that because i have to put it, it, it there's a reason why i love it so fucking much so let's move on um next one okay yes uh my favorite horror franchise of all time for any for any of you guys that are listening um i am a live streamer on twitch and is uh twitch.tv slash uh stavo ad and um once again it's twitch.tv slash stavo ad for any of you guys that want to tune in on it 
and I love horror. So any of you guys that love horror movies, uh, adore it, always talk about it, talk about franchises, always watch it daily even. Uh, I'm your guy, pretty much. I, I love that stuff. And uh, my favorite horror movie franchise is the, che- the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's my favorite franchise of all time. And uh, oh, and also just to mention, if any of you guys always wanted to know what was my favorite horror movie in general, it's actually none of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. It's actually Halloween. And what's weird is that it's not like any classic Halloween. It's actually Rob Zombie's Halloween. That's my favorite film of all time. I can rewatch it over and over and over again. I just think Tyler Maine killed it as Michael. Is the most scariest, the most aggressive, and the it's just the mass, how it's designed and everything is spot on. And it's just the first one. Pretty much showing you how Michael grew up. And um, I don't know why, like, Michael McDowell played Dr. Loomis pretty well in that movie as well. And I really, really loved it. So, like, that movie, number one favorite horror movie of all fucking time. Yes, I know. That's so barbaric. And it's not even just a, a classic movie. It's a remake from a director that a lot of horror movie fanatics do not like. <laughs> Other than Rob Zombie's normal movies, like his, uh, you know... The Devil's Rejects and and A Thousand Corpses. Like, you know, those type of movies that Rob Zombie made, a lot of people do love. But when Rob Zombie made the Halloween movies, uh, people did not like that. And I get that. But, like, I adore it. And you guys can never fucking tell me otherwise. I will always love that movie. And, yeah, I know people are going to hate it. I just don't give a fuck. I love it so much. But, anyways, back to the figures. Um, Yes, I have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, 40th anniversary NECA figure. Now, um, it has a lot in the front. It says, who will survive and what will be left of them? And it shows America's most bizarre and brutal crimes. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. What happened is true. Now the motion picture that's just as real. And it shows the rated, uh, rated R restricted in the bottom of the figure. It's kind of weird because like the... The Friday the 13th Part 2 does not have the rated, uh, the, you know, the the rated of the film at all on the box. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. No, it really... Yeah, it, it really doesn't. Wow. I'm, I'm looking around. That's why I sit quiet for a bit. I'm sorry. But uh, this one actually shows the rated in the bottom of it. And uh, it's the 40th anniversary of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And, of course, is Leatherface. We open it, and um, it shows just classic, classic Bubba for any of you Dead by Daylight fans out there. Classic Bubba, that's it. Just Leatherface holding a chainsaw with the apron on, with the blood stains on him, and he has the classic mask on. So, as the figure itself, he's just there, and he's strapped up and everything. He has a butcher knife, a small little dagger of some sort. It looks like a normal knife, I guess, for his size, but like for us... It, it looks like a small little dagger. He has a sledgehammer, like a small little hammer, pretty much that he uses just to like bash like his fucking victims' heads in. Uh, there's a bloody crowbar. Yeah, it's a bloody crowbar, and the classic chainsaw right next to his left hand. Um, and he has a uh, deformed skinned mask. So pretty much, you can take off the the head of the the classic mask that he has, and you can change it off of the the weird like he probably killed one of his victims and then skinned their skin as always and made a mask of it and uh that's it in the back it shows some like it shows him and it shows like uh the the deformed mask of someone's face him wearing it and also you can you can move his arms around his articulation is actually like great you can move it around like pretty much everywhere and uh, you can put the sledgehammer connected to him and also the chainsaw. He's also holding it very, very well. Like, you know, him being crazy, lifting it up and stuff. And there's a small little dialogue in here as well. It says, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is a tragic tale of five young friends who venture into rural, uh, rural um, Texas. Really? Yeah. <laughs> into rural Texas one hot afternoon and become victims in one of the most bizarre and brutal crimes in, tra- in Travis uh, County history. It's kind of worth saying that. I don't know why. I never really said that in my life. <laughs> Many of them meet a horrific and at the hands of the murderous uh, lunatic Leatherface. 
and what comes to be known as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So that's it. That's the only thing they show on it. And by the way, oh wait, I did mention that I wanted to tell you guys the prices of these figures. So the Friday the 13th Part 2 one was around $40, uh, just straight $40, nothing else, no tax, no nothing. Um, so pretty much it was like 38 something or maybe 39 something, but then it was $40, like just straight, doesn't nothing else. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre figure came about around $45, so like pretty much five bucks more. And um, that's it. So yeah, that is it for for those two. The next one I purchased. Uh, yes, I purchased two of them on the same day. I purchased two of them. Let me just put these back real quick, except this one. And let me put this one back. And this one. All right. Okay, these two. One of them I already mentioned, and it's the the Halloween figure, the 2018 Halloween figure. Uh, it's, it's called Halloween Ultimate Michael Myers, and it includes a light up, flickering pumpkin, as an accessory. And I got a Stephen King's miniseries It the Movie figure. And once again, these are NECA figures, so nothing changes. You guys can, Jesus Christ, you guys, can, you guys can look these up by the way. Uh, hundred percent. I'll put it in the bio in the, in the podcast. For uh, on Spotify, if you guys want to know, and uh, most likely it's going to be on YouTube, so I'm going to be posting it up on like below in the description, so you guys will check out all the info that I have on these figures. So, let's start off with the one that I obviously took out immediately. I got this figure for free, but I will tell you how much it was. The figure was around thirty eight dollars, probably forty forty bucks. Yeah, pretty much it was good. it was around forty bucks, but I got this one for free because um. There's no mistake whatsoever. It just naturally happened. But, like, uh, there's no blame whatsoever. Uh, I was with... It, small little story. <laughs> like, small story short. Just just gonna just keep it just blatantly normal. Uh, I was with my girlfriend. And we're just chilling. And then uh, my older brother told me that he was gonna go to a local comic book store uh, called Zap Comics out here in um, in Wayne, New Jersey. So it's pretty cool. If you guys live in the East Coast in, in Jersey or whatever, go check it out. It's a dope ass place. Uh, I pretty much go there locally now. <laughs> and uh, my brother told me that, oh, do you want do you want anything or whatever? I gave him my debit card and I told him, buy me a NECA figure. Has to be horror. Please, like, just surprise me. Don't get me anything that I'm gonna ask you to get. Just anything horror. So he did saw a couple of them. There was a ghost face one from Scream and a bunch of others and whatever. It was not. Oh, excuse me. And um. He surprised me, all right. He surprised me with a figure from a movie called Pan's Labyrinth or whatever. I forgot what it was called. But, like, it is a fantasy movie. It's not a horror movie. And, once again, NECA figures, they make tons of these. It's not just horror. They make a lot of horror figures, but it's not just only horror movies. They make, like, uh, anything from fantasy to even, like, action, uh, drama figures. Like, they make a lot of things. Like, I saw an Uncharted uh uncharted figure i don't know what was in it but like most like yeah it was from uncharted and that video game is pretty cool but still like you know i'm not looking for those type of figures i i love horror movies i have a huge uh, horror movie collection and uh i do have small little things of horror movie related stuff i have a big life-size uh good guy toy like an actual good guy from chucky uh i even uh bought a cheap very very cheap party city type jason mask and i ended up customizing it myself to make it look more fucked up and more like in the films and um and i have like a bunch of like you know like pop figures of like horror movies it's a bunch of stuff that i love this horror and um and and that's why i'm just like i george kind of <laughs> george kind of like you know did a mistake there uh, I told him that I'm going to return it. Once again, I purchased the figure. He pretty much just picked it up for me. It's not like he bought it for me as a gift or anything. So that's why he doesn't really care. He's like, yeah, go for it. So the next following day, I ended up going back to, well, not back, but like I pretty much went to Zap Comics and uh, I told him that, oh, can I return this? I have, I don't have a receipt, but I do have proof on my debit card that I purchased it. They saw it. And like, All right, cool. Yeah, go for it. Go, uh, go um, exchange it with some other figure. And I told him that just to make it even better, I don't want you guys to, you know, uh, give me my money back. It's just like to make that whole entire hassle. Just I was going to get one. And if, even if it's cheaper than 
who cares? The, you guys can just keep the change or whatever. And they're like, oh, that's cool. Okay, whatever. They, they didn't even mind. They told me that they could give me my money back, even through my debit card. They don't care. But, um, but yeah, other than that, uh, so I pretty much found the ultimate Michael Myers figure. I was just like, oh, yeah, I'll just get this one. Fuck it. I always wanted it. And there was another 2018 Halloween, um, uh, NECA figure, but it wasn't Michael Myers. It was actually Laurie Strode, which was, was pretty fucking cool. But I, I was thinking to myself, like, this collection is, I just started it up. I think I'm going to just buy some monsters and creatures from horror movies as of right now. And then I'll probably get some survivors later on. So as of now, I was like, let me get some killers right now. Let me get some slashers, some creepy ass people, whatever. So I decided to get the Halloween one. And, um, the reason why I got the the it one, I got the Pennywise figure, is because when I saw it there, one the box is actually way bigger than the than the Halloween one. These boxes are actually like you know kind of okay. They're not that big, but like uh, this the Pennywise one was bigger because when I open it, um, he has three different types of faces that he's making. He has a a sad face. He has a sad face as a default face for Pennywise. He has a laughing Pennywise, which is very, very creepy. He has a um, deformed teeth that he has when, when he's about to eat a child and his eyes are wide open. And another face he has is his, he has the same teeth, but his like left side of his face is kind of like messed up. It's really, really fucked up from the movie when, I don't know, something happened, maybe got burnt or whatever. I forgot what happened in the movie. I really did. But, like, I, I just need to watch it again. It's a long miniseries. Don't judge me. But still, and I haven't seen it in quite a while. And um, his accessories are uh, a bunch of hands. He changes his hands differently. Like, you know, he has pointing ones. He has a thumbs up one. He also has some, like, messed up hands where his hands turn black. And the coolest accessory out of them all, he has, he has um, a bunch of balloons in the back of the figure. I can't really see it, but like on the left side, when you open the box, you see uh, him laughing, holding a bunch of balloons. And when I saw it, they're all on the back and they're all sealed perfectly, like, you know, clean and everything. And it also comes with a paper, uh, a paper boat also comes with a paper boat. And uh, at that point, that's when I thought like, this is fucking phenomenal and i'm not gonna lie this is the most scariest uh neca figure i have as of right now compared to all the figures that i have um even from the michael myers one to uh to jason even to uh bubba it doesn't really matter so far out of the six figures i've owned and and i love them dearly all of them but like so far pennywise is the most creepiest one ever and it's not the new pennywise it's the old classic tim curry pennywise so yeah this one is actually pretty cool and um this one i purchased they were both the same day once again when i exchange it the the michael myers one was completely free of charge and the it one was actually the cheapest out of all the bunch that i have the pennywise i got actually was 27 bucks so i spent like 30 dollars you know, plus tax. So it, it said twenty seven ninety nine, and then it was plus tax. So like it was probably around like thirty bucks or twenty nine something. So this was the cheapest NECA figure I got, and it's so weird how it's like it's a bigger box and everything. So, so yeah, those are those are these two figures. Um. Now you guys are probably like wondering, like, oh, this is probably going to be like a, uh, a completely different franchise. If you got a Halloween one, you got a Friday the Thirteenth one, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre one. Um, a, a uh, an it the movie one, so like it's a, like we're gonna have to do something different. No, I do have another Friday the Thirteenth figure. It's a it's Friday the Thirteenth Part Three in three D, NECA figure. Uh, this one's actually pretty fucking awesome. The cover, um, it shows like on the side of each like the side of the box. It just shows the title of the the figure. It shows Jason coming right at you. Um, and in front, it has some weird 3D prompt like cover in front of it. So you move it side to side, and the the cover actually moves. And um, I don't want to really do this because I know a lot of you guys do not like the noise of it. So pretty much it it, it kind of feels like it's um. I don't know what it is, but like if you use your nails on it, it makes noise and a lot of people do not like it. I don't know how to describe it, but pretty much it shows Jason with no mask 
and it's like a black silhouette, so you don't really see Jason at all. And you see a knife, and it's going towards you, and you can see it actually going towards you. It's pretty badass. And it shows the title of the screen, uh, well, the title of the, the movie, Friday the 13th Part 3 3D. And uh, in the top of the box, it says, A New Dimension in Horror. And, um, yeah, that's about it. The back shows... Um, pretty much just all the accessories that comes with jason just jason with his mask you can take off the mask and has his face he has like his little pitchfork as a um as a weapon there's actually a uh, a noose that you can have decorated around jason and that's pretty badass um some fences that you can add around there's a uh an axe and i think a pitchfork so let me just open it and uh, yeah, it shows the displays and everything. it's just more of the back that I'm describing. So yeah, you can carry like a machete, a uh, that is so. Oh yeah, another like sort of like a uh, pitchfork, a an axe. Um, what is that right there? Oh, that's um, I don't know. It's like one of those things that you use to like push like push like the the fire like in a um. Like, if you have, like, a campfire and you have, like, one of those, like, black, uh, I don't know, like, those staff things. I don't know what they are. But pretty much you use it to move, like, the firewood. So then the fire will stay lit. I forgot what they're called. If anyone has any idea, then, like, let me know. He has, like, a knife. He has a wrench. And that's it. And pretty much Jason's in the middle. So, yeah. that This one is one of my favorite covers of all fucking time. But, um... Now, <laughs> oh, for any of you guys that do know my collection and and already know where I'm going to go with this, I'll be right back. I know I'm, I'm, I would never do this in a podcast, Chad. I would never do, but I have to get it for the podcast. Coming back. It's right here. Okay. It's right in front of me. Let me just put my headset back on. Hello. Okay. So, <laughs> this is not going to be any better. So, this is another Friday the 13th figure. Now, you guys are probably wondering, this guy really loves Friday the 13th. I, it's, it's a great franchise, <laughs> but, like, it is not up there. I, I love Jason, though. I think if I have to choose one of my favorite, like, killers... He's probably my top five. A hundred percent, if I have to think about it. So, this one's an exclusive figure that I have. I also purchased it in Zap Comics, and it was in a, like, um, a, a clear case. It was, like, a figurine case filled with toys that are usually exclusive stuff that you have to ask the, the owners of the store, any of the employees in the store, to help you to get something behind whatever you want. And um, I saw this in the back of it, and it cost $120 for this figure. Uh, shouts out to my brother, uh, George, for hooking me up with this figure. It, it really meant a lot to me, because he knows for a fact this is a new hobby of mine. And this is something that I truly, truly love. This is not for scalping or anything. This is not for you know making money or, or whatnot. This is for my horror collection. Now, I do buy a lot of other horror things. There's some like toys, keychains, paperweight figures, whatever. Like anything that I have around my, my room and stuff, I will have something horror related. But this is something that I truly, truly love. I'm going to be making my room soon. I'm, I'm making a room for myself. And um, pretty much I'm going to have like construction on it and stuff like that. Make my room look fucking amazing. And I'm going to have some shelves on the walls, like mounted on the walls. So I can place these figures and it will look so fucking amazing. I'm going to be getting a lot of these. Like a lot of these. I can't wait to go to Comic Con to get some NECA figures. And to be honest though, tickets right now are kind of unbearable. Which we will talk about later in this podcast. But right now I'm just, I just want to talk about just this amazing figure right in front of me. So this, so it's, it, it shows classic Friday the 13th. There's nothing special than that. Just Friday the 13th. The cover kind of reminds me of like, you know, it's from the NES era of Friday the 13th. From the movie and from the video game on the NES. Says destroy Jason if you can. Power play series official NECA seal of quality. And in the in the bottom left corner it says only at GameStop. Which is kind of crazy because I don't remember this figure being in GameStop. I don't really want to take off the sticker. 
Uh, it's pretty much like pops where they're like, oh yeah, uh, GameStop exclusive, Walmart exclusive, uh, Hot Topic exclusive. It's pretty much like those, but like this doesn't really say exclusive on it. It just says it is an exclusive on GameStop, but like I never knew these figures were at GameStop or anything. I don't know who owned this figure at all, but it's crazy how it says only at GameStop sticker, like right in the bottom left corner. Um, in the back, it shows some dialogue and it shows Jason's face. The deadly weapons that he carries, which is a machete or a, or pretty much a hatchet, and it shows it shows a floating head, and um, it it reads it shows a couple like words here. It reads, it all takes place out at Crystal Lake, that pleasant little camp where happy children of all ages go to spend a fun-filled summer, but summer will be different. The fun will have to wait. Jason has decided to come to camp, and terror is the only game. They'd be playing. Don't think that hiding in a cabin or staying adrift in a, ca a canoe will keep you safe. The only way to survive this summer is to challenge Jason face to face and destroy him. Don't worry that it's it hasn't been done before. There is always a first time. Well, not always. <laughs> That's it. Um... Now, there's something special about this figure. I don't want to open it. Like, okay, I want to open it right now. I'm, I'm too stoked for it. I haven't opened it since I purchased it because when I kept opening it. Even George kept opening it. There is another stamp of approval right above the official NECA uh, seal of approval. And it says, open flap to play authentic theme music. Let's hope it goes through the mic. Let me open it right now. Wait for it. Hello? <laughs> it's not even playing now. Wait. That's weird. Please play. That's weird. It's not playing. Please don't tell me the batteries die. Well, I don't even know if batteries would, would die, but... Oh, come on, it needs to play. But, okay, um, the figure is actually the NES version of Jason. So, if any of you guys don't know how that looks, is actually, um, if you played Friday the 13th on the NES, Jason actually looked very, very blue. The mask and the skin was a teal blue, and his whole entire outfit is purple. That, that, those exact colors is on a figure, which is awesome. And the severed head is actually the same color of the mask, which is teal. And um, pretty much it, it plays authentic music. And it's a classic music from the NES. I don't know why it's not playing though. It was playing. Hello? Can I speak to it? Please play, Jason. Come on. Come on. It was playing like yes. Oh, well, not even yesterday. What was it? Two days? No, no, it was yesterday. What am I saying? I don't know why it's not playing. I don't want to give this up. I really, I want to affect it whatsoever. I, I want it to work. I don't know why it's not working. And also, the box is mint condition, mind you. Do I have to leave it open a bit just to? Damn, this really sucks right now. I don't want to open it or anything, but like, once again, like it, it made the music and everything on point. God fucking damn it. Oh, it always works. Okay, so I just I just flashed. So, okay, okay. So pretty much my room is dark right now. I have like dim lights playing, like like around my room. <laughs> so I had to flash a light because I think the figure thinks it's too dark in my room. Okay, so here is the music.
So that's that's the that's the music that comes with it. And uh, yeah, this is an exclusive uh, NECA figure that I've owned out of the six that I've owned. Well, the five that I owned. Pretty much, this is the, this counts as the sixth one. And um, I'm so happy that this figure existed. It's weird that like pretty much out of all the figures that I found and I purchased freely, I didn't expect them to put that in in like you know I didn't expect to see this one as Zap Comics. It wasn't there in the beginning, but then when I purchased the the Halloween one and the Pennywise one, that's when I saw it there. And when I mentioned to the people that oh um you know the people that work at Zap Comics, they were just like, oh yeah yeah that's a NECA figure. At that point, that's when I was just like, oh my god, I'm, I'm so sold for it. So, at that point, that is my col- that's my NECA collection so far. I have three additional Friday the 13th figures. I have one Halloween figure, a It the Movie figure, and I do have a Texas Chainsaw Massacre figure. They're all, like, amazing. You guys have to, like, check these... Uh, figures out i kind of want to get like a stand and it spins around and then i kind of want to address it once more and and express each and every single figure that i have here and how much i adore it and everything and post it on youtube i won't be posting up like toys on my youtube channel i will always still be posting up like me playing like you know video games on my channel and uh more episodes of the podcast of course but this is something that I truly love, and I'm so, like I got myself into it because the box covers look great. the The figures actually do look great as well. I didn't expect these figures to look good. I thought they were gonna look like shit. To be honest, I just wanted the boxes, and um, it's just because when I got the first one, the part two of Friday the Thirteenth, I was like, yeah, no biggie. This looks like a normal toy or whatever. And to be honest, though, I kind of wanted to open it later on because I just left it in the box and. Just as a display for my table, where my two monitors are, and some of my consoles, like my Xbox is right next to me, and that's it. And I just wanted to just display there, just to show people that, like, you know, I have some horror stuff on my table, of course. And when when I decided to buy the Texas Chainsaw Massacre one, and then um, when I got the Halloween one, and I was already sold, I already have four as of right now. I purchased the 3D one, and also I forgot to mention the 3D uh, one. That one costs 45 bucks, the 3D one. I I I just realized that I forgot to mention what price that one was. But other than that, (laughs) besides the point, um, I fell in love. I had this rush that I'm just like, oh, I found myself a brand new hobby, and I love it a lot. I even have a group chat with my older brother George, and I have two of my friends, which will probably be on the podcast soon. Not going to say anything as of right now, but they will be on the podcast whenever they're free and whenever I get a chance to actually schedule them into the podcast. But other than that, uh, they're, they're like, they're collectors. They're, they're, they're collectors of, of specific things. So like I have a friend named Pete in the group chat and he collects pretty much everything. He collects a lot of retro games. He, he showed me stuff that I didn't even know he even owned. And um, my friend uh, Mike Sench, which is a good friend of mine, uh, he collects pops. And and I tell you, like, yes, there are some people that have like wall, like fill a room filled with pops. And I have friends that have a room filled with pops and shit, or at least a wall filled with pops. But my friend, he started his pop collection not that long ago, and he's been buying a lot of exclusive ones too. Like he buys a lot of pops that he loves, of course. But he got himself some pops from, like, E3 of 2018. He got himself, like, a Super Sonic uh, or maybe a Super, uh, maybe Super, uh, what's his fucking name? Shadow. I don't know why I couldn't even say Shadow. I, I got, like, a brain fart there for a second. I'm sorry. But, like, he pretty much got himself, like, either a Super Sonic or a Super Shadow, uh, pop figure. And it's a E3 2018 exclusive, which is pretty, like, crazy. And he got a couple of Chase Pops as well. The one that he got the same day that came in the mail with the Supersonic one. Uh, he got himself a... I was jealous for this one because I really love Horror Pops. He got himself a... Uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think it's um, the second movie. Pretty much where Leatherface is dressed up as a woman. 
and like a mom some sort with the makeup and everything he got that pop figure and it is a chase uh it's a chase pop and also a hot topic exclusive and i'm like holy fucking shit and he told me like oh i'm surprised how you didn't break your neck over the e3 one i'm like no that's awesome like no joke like an e3 pop like dude there's not a lot of those clearly but i told him that i'm just too much of a horror fan to completely ignore your Leatherface pop right there. So, like, I, I, I was jealous. Or I was 100% jealous. Essentially, if you're hearing this shit, like, now you know. I was extremely fucking jealous when I saw that pop. And to be honest, when I got myself the Friday the 13th uh, NES uh, NECA figure that day, I was looking at all the pops on the wall and just to see if there's any horror pops. And that's where I got my monsters, uh, Herman Monster pop i got myself a herman monster because i love the monsters so fucking much and apparently there's a, a uh the walgreens exclusive there's a walgreens exclusive pop i completely i did not even know i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna sit here and and think to myself yeah yeah, yeah. this like walgreens sold pops like no i never knew they sold pops at all and apparently if you get herman monster dressed up as a bad biker with a leather jacket and stuff and him smiling Apparently, it's a Walgreens exclusive. I saw a Walgreens exclusive sticker on it, and I bugged out. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this one. I'm going to buy this one. <laughs> and uh, it was either that one or maybe Ripley with a spacesuit from Alien. And I was like, I could get that. And I love the Alien franchise a lot. But I was thinking to myself, like, it's Herman fucking Monster. Come on. I can't. I can't have this one just just be thrown away like i'm not gonna just have that shit on the wall and most likely if i don't buy this now either i'm gonna regret it later because someone's gonna buy it or no one's gonna buy it but i'm just gonna lose interest of it so i was like i have to get it so i got myself it um i do have a paperweight figure in front of me right now and it's actually between my two monitors and it's leatherface it's awesome it's just leatherface with a big ass head <laughs> he's very very bloody and uh, it's very, very small. It's pretty much where you, you put paper. Like, it's a paperweight. It's a small little paperweight. And he's holding a chainsaw. It's pretty heavy, though. Pretty much if this falls, this will break. Like, it, it's not made out of glass. But it feels like if it falls, it will break. And um, pretty much it feels like it's sculpted. It feels like someone sculpted. But it's pretty cool. And I just put it in between my two monitors. So, <laughs> the face will look cute. Just in between the monitors and to be honest i always look at it it's, it's pretty cool it's like whenever i'm gaming and stuff like that i'll get a chance to at least glance at it and i'm just like look, look at the other face looking all cute and shit <laughs> so it's it's pretty awesome uh having a hobby that you truly truly love and especially when it comes to collecting the fact that you get to collect something and feel some sort of rush or or feel very happy into loving something and having it and owning it it, I don't even know how to even put it into words. It's just, it just feels great having something like that. The fact that I have these, uh, these NECA figures, will I ever open them? Some of them, especially the ones that I have, there's probably like one or two that I might open. Now, the reason why is because uh, the Friday the 13th NES one, I will never open. It was expensive. It's kind of rare. And also, um, I'm thinking about getting a glass box. Not really a glass box, but pretty much... You know how like when people want have like an exclusive pop and they have like a clear box to, over it to like protect it of all costs to have it mint. I'm thinking of getting something sort of like that for these NECA figures. It's kind of bigger. It's way bigger than a than a pop box. Oh my god, I'm like I'm burping a lot. I'm pretty gassy. I'm sorry, chat, but oh excuse me. I'm trying to get something for for um for that figure and uh, especially some future figures along the way that I might have and keep in the box. But I saw um, on eBay, I saw I saw Tim Curry like sign a Pennywise figure, the exact same figure that I have, and he signed it, and and I'm like, and someone's selling it on eBay for three hundred dollars, and you can buy it like now for three hundred dollars, and when I saw that shit, I was like, I just had to fucking get it, and um, I really do want it, so I ended up. <laughs> I, I I'm gonna buy it one day, one way or another. I saw it and I went for the fucking hills. I need to get that figure. So that's where I'm gonna get my Pennywise figure, and most likely I'm probably gonna open it up and just have it displayed 
and just be like, look, this is one of them. Because it's, once again, it's like one of the cooler figures that I have. And he gets to hold balloons. I I've, I can't say no to that. So, like, I can open that one, which is mine, the, the default one. And I can have one sealed and it's signed by Tim Curry. I just have to fucking get it. It's, it's so fucking badass. Um, and I think one day I might open up the the Leatherface one because once again like I do love Leatherface a lot and sooner or later I will probably go to um like a horror convention find out like any like horror fans or maybe maybe some like future like uh Leatherface uh people that are like you know like you know people that played Leatherface in the, in the newer films and stuff and make them sign it who the fuck knows because I know um the 2003 remake of uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I know he still goes to like uh, some to some conventions and stuff. Actually, due to, due to uh, you know COVID and stuff, is completely different. But uh, that that's what I heard. I don't know. I could be fucking wrong. But like, who the hell knows? Maybe I just might just open this one up and just you know it would just be kind of badass just on my table or something like that. I don't know. I I really don't know. So. So that's that with with some like NECA figures. I I want to find out more. I want to see more. If any of you guys uh will like to actually help me out and see some figures for my collection, and would want to know if I would be interested in some of them, or if you guys want to like send some to me, then um that will be some private information that I will probably DM to you guys. Because once again, I don't have a PO box. I gotta do all that nonsense stuff. I will probably make a PO box and everything. So then some of you guys can probably send some things my way and also review it. Of course, I will post them up and let you guys like see it and be like, oh, yeah, this is a figure from this guy or this girl or whatever. But other than that, I, I love my collection so far. I have six and I am going to continue buying more. And I don't think there's ever going to be a limit. I love every single figure I have and, and I don't think I would ever get rid of these. Like I will probably move out with my lady and uh we're gonna have a huge horror collection and and she doesn't even like horror it's funny she's more of a thriller and a drama like fanatic like she loves those type of movies and and even like series like you know shows and stuff when it comes to horror she only watches it with me but like if she if i tell her that there is a movie that is extremely fucking scary that i don't even think you can handle it and you'll probably get nightmares she will not watch it you know, Terrifier or Hereditary, like those type of movies, like she would not want to watch those movies. She would completely avoid them. She's like, no, I'm not going to watch them. But she loves watching slasher movies with me. She loves watching Friday the 13th movies. She would love to see Halloween. She would love to see, you know, um, the Leatherface franchise. She would love to see Scream with me. Like all these movies she would love to see with me. Um, But like at that point, she she's not really a horror fan. I'm more of a horror fan at that point. So yes, let's talk about Comic Con because I've been dying for these these uh, these badges so much, and it's really fucking stressful, like extremely fucking stressful. So apparently, um, tickets right now are kind of hard to get, and. It's kind of fucked up because there's scalpers getting these tickets. They're getting them day one and and also getting them a little bit earlier than other people. And they're making a profit out of it. Some of them are not even going to go to Comic-Con. Some of them they are, but some of them they're not. They're just trying to get these badges and trying to sell them for a bigger profit. And obviously they don't really give a fuck. A ticket for Comic-Con is 60 bucks, And probably some some people are selling them for like 80 or maybe like 100 something dollars. Because they're like, hey, I'm not going to go. But hey, if you want my ticket, 100 bucks. Or something. And it's it kind of sucks because like, you know, people don't really want to deal with that. I've seen people go to Comic Con seven like I don't know people, but I remembered I saw something on on an, on their post on Instagram. New York Comic Con posted up something on Instagram and they pretty much just stated that like they will be releasing a batch of badges and they're gonna do one more chance for people to get their tickets to go to Comic Con. And as, as of right now, Saturday is literally impossible. Me and George are still going to try because we always want to go Friday and Saturdays. We always go Friday and Saturdays every year. But the problem is, is that this year, 
uh, apparently it's very very hard to get Saturday because everyone wants to go on Saturday. So they sell out like like that. So me and George are thinking that if we're not gonna if if it's if it's possible that we can get Saturday, we're gonna go on Saturday. We're gonna go Friday Saturday. But if if Saturday is impossible, we're gonna go Friday and Sunday, which we don't usually do. But other than that, um, yeah. So pretty much people are kind of messing everything up. They sold in under twelve hours. They sold out tickets. Right now you can't get shit. It just says coming soon. So they're gonna release it one more time. We don't know when, but we gotta have their notifications on Instagram for any of you guys that really want to go to Comic Con this year. And I mean this literally. And New York Comic Con, any of the people from the East Coast or even from the West Coast, who the fuck knows? Anyone that wants to just fly out here in New York City and and want to get their tickets, um, I don't know what time it's gonna be or anything. There's no time. There's no nothing. They just said that hey, keep in touch with our Instagram and maybe Twitter. I'm I'm not sure, but they pretty much just said that you have to keep in touch with what they need to do. And when they post it up and your notifications goes up, they will be live. And they're going to be like, hey, our tickets are up. You can go buy some tickets. And that is going to be the time where we're going to buy our tickets. Now, scalpers are probably going to fuck it up. We don't know for sure. But we just have to fucking find out and see. Till then, we're going to just try to grind. And and once again, it's just like Comic-Con is very, very fun and... And I just need to just go this year. I've staying home last year was shit, so we gotta go out. But other than that, um, when when they were posting up that we have to like you know be ready and stuff and get themselves notified, I saw comments below of the post, and they there's people that were saying like, dude, I've been going to Comic Con for seven years, and this is the only year that is completely bullshit. Like I saw comments stated like that below. There's people that have been going to Comic Con for years, and this is the first time that it's a bitch right now. And no one likes that shit. No one does. No one wants to deal with that shit. I don't want to deal with that shit. I went to Comic Con twice, and and I fell in love with it. Ever ever like I I really need to go this year. I really do. I want to buy some cool stuff. I gotta see the neck of figures that they have over there. They might have figures that, and and it could be cheap too. They can have figures out there in Comic Con, and they, it can be like Candyman. They can have like Beetlejuice. They can have so much. Who the fuck knows? But I gotta get myself some NECA figures out there, and obviously, you know, just enjoy myself, meet some new friends, meet some cosplayers, even meet some celebrities. Like it, it, it can be like phenomenal. And also, like once again, like with with <laughs> with the figures, it's not even just figures. I can buy clothes as well, and um. You know, and comics, of course. I gotta get some comics. What the fuck? I forgot to mention that. <laughs> I gotta get myself some comics. Till then, though, we, we can't really do anything until we we find out what, what what can we do. We just have to just, you know, wait and see. I have them notified from IGTVs to, to their stories to their posts. I put everything on. Because they really want to go to Comic-Con. And there's probably people that are, like, giving up. My group chat is even saying like, yo, is it even possible to even fucking go? And and I'm like, it, it's still possible. It's just right now it's 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 kind of whack. Because like I have a friend that never been and he wants to go. He just wants to go with people. And and when I saw him post that on Instagram, I even let him I let him know that I was like, yo, I'm going to go with a couple of my friends if you want to tag along with us. And and he's like, yo, I'm, I'm straight down. And we're in a group chat. And he's like, yo, how the fuck do I get these tickets? It's kind of impossible right now. It just keeps saying coming soon, coming soon. And then. We all had a long ass talk on the group chat telling telling everyone that like yo we can't get tickets right now cuz they're all sold out and it's impossible right now. And apparently the only thing that was easy to get was Thursday yesterday and some people got Thursday so till then we can't redo really anything for sure until we fucking figure it out. I don't I don't like it when they do shit like that. They there's people that kind of ruin the fun for a lot of like fans. It's just people out there that really love going to Comic-Con and and I get it. If there's people that have been going every fucking year, how about you take a fucking break and let some new people go? Like, yeah, that's fine. But, like, I don't like scalpers. Scalpers fuck up everything. For any of you guys that don't know what scalpers are, there's people that sell things for money. And they pretty much just make a living out of it. They have so much dough. They, who the fuck knows? They probably just make money out of, like, you know, they probably live out of doing what they do for scalping. They probably literally have their own home, a big house and everything just from scalping. You can do anything for scalping. Shoes, 
toys, video games, everything. Scalpers are the reasons why you can't even get yourself an Xbox Series X or a PS5. Deadass. They're the reasons why you can't get the new consoles. So, I don't know. That's the only thing. That's the only thing I I just have to say about that. It's it's really really annoying. So, I actually do want to talk about uh one other thing. I wanted to talk about um, what's that shit called? I'm trying to think right now. Uh, damn, it's really really hard. I'm trying to think right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I wanted to talk about the podcast in general. Like, what's what's happening with this podcast, and where where is it leading to? Now, I'm actually stoked that this podcast exists. It's only for me. It's for me. You know, uh, I am the host of the whole entire show, and I'll be having guests on the show. Now, I want to let everyone know what this podcast is about. Yes, it's called Vend Your Heart Out, and this is just me and how I truly feel about a lot of things in my life and current basis. Anything that's going on right now in my life, I'll probably explain to you guys everything and and just see how I feel about it. And this is where the guests come along. I will be inviting a lot of special guests onto the show and just talking about things that they just deal with on a daily basis, what they love to do, what what they're into, hobbies everything they can even talk about like what they like in a female or a male or whatever like they can tell me about kinky shit and this show will get weird i'm telling you this right now that the show will get weird and uh, the biggest thing is that this is going to be talking about a lot of horror stuff and there's going to be people that i'm actually going to be asking a lot of horror movie questions to to see what they're really into in horror like i want to ask people that i never really ever asked these questions to I want to know if they're even into the genre, and even if they're not into the genre, I want to know what was their first horror movie they ever seen, what, uh, why they don't like it, uh, what's their limit of horror movies and stuff, and what they do in Halloween, et cetera, et cetera. Like, there's so many questions to it. This show, this this podcast will be, be interesting, and I hope there's going to be the long run for you guys to enjoy it, and... It's going to be awesome. Like there's there, I know there's a lot of horror fans out there that uh listen to like, you know, Dead Meats podcast and there's a, like a lot of bunch of other horror podcasts out there that I've never actually tried out but I feel like they're all like pretty fantastic. This is going to be one of them. It's kind of weird that like, you know, this is how the cover looks like and it seems super chill and everything, but like this is a this is going to be a horror genre podcast 100%. It's it's a lot of things to to feel in. It's gonna be like a lot of things that we're gonna be talking about in the podcast. That has nothing to do with horror movies, but like, it's it's venting your heart out. You're gonna be talking about things that you just want to just let all out, and you will love to say it on the podcast. And don't give a fuck. But I can't wait for more of the horror topics at hand. And there's gonna be there's gonna be like you know uh, there's gonna be moments where like okay this part this part this part one part is gonna be. Us talking about horror movies all all the way, everything about horror, and then the other parts are going to be just about other things like what kind of movies you're into, what, what hobbies, all this other stuff, and what you're dealing with in a daily life, whatever, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. See a lot of cool friends that are going to be part of this podcast, and I just can't wait to talk about it. And um, I think that's about it. I just been meaning to just like just talk about these like specific things. It is 11.52 p.m. right now, and uh, I will be posting this on, on, like, you know, I'm going to be posting this every single Monday. It's just today is going to be the only day that I'm going to be posting the episode on Tuesday. It's completely off topic, I know, but this is the only time that I'm going to be doing this. Every Sunday, I'll be recording and then posting it on Monday. So that is the schedule. Do not get confused. It's just today's the only day. I've been busy this past weekend. And also, once again, I gotta be making some money, so there's gonna be a lot of of me, like you know, being busy on trying to get a job, all this other stuff. I'm I'm 24 years old, and I'm looking for a job right now. I've been working, but like it's just it's kind of hard to do the grind. So like as much as that, I love live streaming and I love doing this podcast. I still gotta be working on the side. So, <laughs> uh, but other than that, that is it for for this episode of Vend Your Heart Out. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys uh really love my my figurines and would love to see photos of it i'll be i post them up on instagram if you guys want to add me on instagram is asdavo.ad 
and you guys can see my horror collection there. Or you can go on my Twitter at StavoAD underscore TV on Twitter. You can check them out there as well. Other than that, it's your boy Stavo signing out.